right now than the way I thought I would if he had won the fight. So I'm proud of you and I love you. Thank you, man. Uh, you have something to say? No, talk to the people, Jay, please. Talk to the people. Well, well, well. <laughs> My son said to talk to the people. So I shall. We came into this affair with very little chance of winning by your standards. But Team Jacobs knew from the point that we started training camp until we actually entered that ring that we were ready to win. And Danny showed tonight why he is not just an elite middleweight, but a world champion middleweight. Um, Keith just expressed the fact that he was really proud of him. But I don't think there's anybody in here as proud of Danny as I am. We've uh, been on this quest for supremacy since he was 14 years old. And I've watched him grow into a strong, intelligent, charismatic man and a fantastic fighter. Uh, they often say that, that great trainers are, are only great by the athletes that they work with. Uh, tonight, my son made me great. I love him. Uh, well, um, you know, I'm really proud of myself that uh, I went in there and I gave it all that I had, and you know, I showed some moments of true grit and uh, you know the fight didn't go in my favor although I do really felt like I won that fight I mean I definitely think it at least could have been a draw to say the least uh, but it didn't go my way and I won't complain but I'm happy that like I've said inside the ring that you know the fans ultimately were the winners because that definitely wasn't a dull fight uh, we traded, uh, we boxed, and we used our skills and, you know, we entertained everyone. So that was our job and I felt like we did our job 110%. Uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity and I know that with the performance that I had now that it's not over for me, that the future is that much brighter and uh, we're going to continue to keep pushing. So thank you guys for all the support leading up to the fight, all the media coverage that we've had. You know, uh, you guys keeping this boxing thing alive. You know, it's you guys. And it's your responsibility to make sure that we do it the right way, or that you do it the right way. And I appreciate the applause you. Um, but, you know, boxing is boxing, and anything can happen. And I definitely think <laughs> I shocked a lot of people tonight uh, because going in, I was definitely the underdog, and uh, I had no chance. So I proved who I am, and I proved what I can do. But all I can do is look forward to the future. So thank you guys very much. And uh, I guess we can start taking some questions and we're going to do the hand thing. Danny, to your right, congratulations on a great fight. Thank you. I wonder, first of all, if you feel like you come out of this enhanced, even though you lost a fight, that your reputation is higher than it was going in? I got that Bruce Lee work though, man. <laughs> I really feel like, you know, this was a win-win situation for me. Um, because when you're the underdog, it's like I was, and when you go the distance and you fight back and you hurt the fighter and you, you know, you show what you have inside of you, you know, this is boxing. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but it's also mainly about making fans and pleasing everyone and showing that you're a crowd-pleasing fighter. And then the second thing I want to ask is, you see sometimes guys, they won't take fights unless all the terms are in their favor, and you took a fight that necessarily, the terms aren't all weren't in your favor. And so do you feel like if more guys would do that, that the sport itself would be better and that the boxing would be in a better place than, than it is currently? Yeah, absolutely. I think boxing has uh, turned out to be um, more of a business because it's more lucrative than it had ever been before. So certain, uh, certain popular fighters kind of take advantage of that. 
Uh, but I understand that I was in a position where I had to earn my respect and I had to you know, go up there and face the best, even if the terms wasn't really in my favor. You know, I'm happy with the negotiations and how things went from it. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I just go back to the phone boys and see if we can get the rematch or see if we can move forward. But you know, I definitely think uh, this was a win-win situation for me. Danny, I'm sure there was a part of you that, that wondered coming in what Golovkin's power would feel like and how you would react to it. After going through 12 rounds, what did it feel like and how would you, how do you feel you reacted to it? It wasn't what everybody made it out to be. <laughs> I mean, it definitely wasn't this boogeyman, knockout artist that everyone is saying. And even when I got dropped, they said I got pushed a little bit. I mean, I think it did, but I would have to go back and see it. But I wanted to go train with him right there because it, it really didn't hurt me. I really didn't get hurt like I thought if I got, if, if, if he landed one of those shots, it would be over, you know? And he's a, I won't say he's the biggest middleweight, but he's a, he's a fair sized middleweight. And I knew going into the fight that I would be the bigger man. And, you know, we outlanded him in punches. We threw more punches. We just overall, you know, was successful with the game plan. Um, he was a tough fighter. I knew he was going to come forward, but he showed respect. He didn't come forward disrespectfully like he did every other fighter, the 23 guys that he's knocked out. He showed respect, and my boxing ability demanded that respect, and also my power. So I'm happy. I'm proud. All I can do is not cry over a bit of milk. Sour. Sour. Sorry. Do you remember the first power shot you took that? Man, I got hit with an overhand right from the back of my ear, you know. And I don't know if I was down or what it was, but um, I just said, okay, this is what we're working with? Okay, it's not that bad. We can work. And as you've seen, I've showed times where I wanted to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe, and I was grinning at him, and I was, <clears throat> let's go. There's nothing that he did that stop me from being confident, stop me from my game plan. Um, if anything, I just switched out for him and he's shown vulnerability there as well. Um, I'm happy, I'm, I'm really happy with my performance. I wanna go back and watch the tape to see, cause I'm a, I'm a biggest critic as well. So I'm really fair with if I lost, I lost, but in my heart, I really felt like I really didn't lose this fight. Danny, just to follow up on that, did I understand you to say that you thought the punches would be harder before you guys, because of everything that had been yeah, said. Yeah, I mean, the, the way you guys make it seem like so. <laughs> None of us got <laughs> like, man, this guy is really the boogeyman. Did he really knock out guys with one shot? I was like, man. So this is what it's all about? When I got hit, I was like, okay. Even when I got knocked down, it was right. just like, let's go. I stood toe to toe right after I got knocked down. Is that why your confidence seemed to grow as the fight went on? Absolutely. Um, you know, when it's the unseen, you don't know. You have to plan, you have to be cautious. You have to do it round by round, round by round. That was our plan, was to win each round. But do it cautiously. Not go in there reckless, and just because I had knockouts as well, and go in there and try to stop the guy. So, you know, it's all good. And Danny, when you talk about the respect that he had to show you, how much of it had to do with your hand speed making it tough for him to stay inside where he normally does? Um, I think it was, yeah, it was the hand speed a lot. I'm not sure which one it was the most, the power of the hand speed, but I did land sometimes at will with my jab, and especially when I was southpaw, I mean, at times he really couldn't touch me. Um, but I'm not sure if the judges seen him throwing harder shots or however they were judging it, but at the end of the day, I'm happy with my performance. If we can do it again, I would love to. Was that for you before something decided to Yeah, I mean, if you've seen him ever, if you ever seen him fight a softball, he's always shown vulnerability. Kasim Umar, Mon Monroe, uh, this guy named Ivan Gardner, that really showed me some, some flaws in him. And I was just like, I'm really good at switching softball, so you know, let's go in here and switch it up and confuse them. And that's exactly what I felt like we did. One thing about that, Danny, with the Southpaw stands up while I asked you. Hold on, did you think I won, Danny? 
Uh, I had the fight one fifteen to one twelve for Triple G. Oh my jeez! But you bought a hell of a fight. Guys, like, oh, <laughs> I should have asked. Him. I should have asked fight somebody like that. What are my fans? I probably should have. Asked. Go ahead, man. I love you anyway. Thank you, brother. Um, no, but if it was working so well, Southpaw, why didn't you stay there? You'd only did it a couple of times, and for kind of short stretches earlier in the fight. Did you think about staying there much longer to, because you said you saw the flaws? Yeah, well, you know, the game plan was to not stay Southpaw. Um, the game plan was just confusing. And I do Southpaw very well, I'm doing as well as Orthodox. So that's why it probably wasn't the best idea to stay Southpaw. But, I mean, you've seen him missing, you've seen him not really being able to land, especially those hard right hands that he normally does. So, yeah. One other question then. A lot of the discussion about has been about how you took Gennady Golovkin's punching power and, and it wasn't as much as you thought it might be. My question for you is, uh, do you feel like you landed your best punch on him and what was your thought and, and how he reacted to your punching power because your power was a little bit downplayed coming in because of the knockout streak that right. was so much greater than the one you were working on. I definitely thought I hurt him maybe two times in the fight. Not hurt him enough to where uh, he'll go down, but I definitely seen him back up and when I hit him with a body shot, a hard body shot, I heard him go, Ugh. you know, so, I mean, he's a man. And when I was looking at him, the face off, that's all I seen. I didn't see anything that you guys made him out to be. I seen a man that could be hurt, and that's what the mentality that I have going inside that room. Danny, how important was it for you? I know you rehydrated to maybe above, well above 170. Did that extra weight help you accomplish, you know, take those punches a little bit more effectively? One would know. I would have no idea. Um, I just know that I'm a big middleweight. Um, and I know he's not the biggest middleweight, even though he's a big puncher. Really didn't seem to hurt me that much. I don't know if the nutrition played a part, but we lost the weight very well. Um, Chris Algeri helped me out and did a very, very good job of making sure that we weren't drained, like maybe some of the previous fights we had before, and uh, we hydrated properly, make sure we can put out best performer. And yeah, you, you, you talk. Huh? What did you weigh when you got in the ring? Probably about 175. Yeah. You spoke about this fight being your destiny, and uh, you know, at the end of that 11th round, when you were impressive to close it, you kind of like, you know, pump your chest and what did that what did that moment feel like and and as the the, the fight went to the judges how were you feeling i was 100 percent confident that i was going to get this victory um you know when i was pumping my chest and i was like i said i was <clears throat> grinning at him and you know showing that bravado i was just i was in the zone and once you're in the zone it's kind of hard to get you out like when triple g is you know, get that momentum, it's kind of hard to stop him. So that was just me, you know, showing what I had and letting him know that this ain't going to be, you know, one of those easy go rounds like you've had in the past. Um, Daniel, congrats on a good fight. Thank you. Um, Golovkin said that he thinks you deserve a rematch, but, you know, the sentiment was that that's not going to be immediate because he's probably going to fight, you know, Saunders in June and then maybe Canelo in you know, September. So if you don't get an immediate rematch, who do you go to next? I mean, that's not up to me. I have no idea who's out there, you know? I have no idea. That's why I have a team to take care of those things. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm confident that I can be the best middleweight in the world. I really feel like I got this victory tonight. And most importantly, we gain fans so that we can possibly get a rematch in the future, whether it happens tomorrow or next year. Don't matter. Well, lastly, um, you know, there was a lot of chatter about the IBF second day weigh-in. Lofton said that he felt like you weren't respecting the sport with the decision. I just wanted to see what your mindset was. No, it wasn't really so me being disrespectful. I mean, it's my prerogative to, you know, want to get up at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning and do a weigh-in and to be restricted um, to 170 pounds. So it was mainly me just wanting to uh, stay hydrated and not have to focus on the little things, even though I respect this boxing game, I respect all sanctions and their ruling, but for me, you know, I really wanted to focus on this fight, and we had a game plan, and we wanted to make sure, you know, we use our size, and we have the best possible nutrition that we can, and waking up early, for me, was just a hard thing to do, not because we were overweight, but I didn't want to have an issue whatsoever. 
Keith, Danny, Andrew, and I have a chance to get out at about 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, so, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, you Congratulations <laughs> and a great morning. Yeah,